So let's see how these heuristics are working. And basically, there are three ingredients that we will investigate. These three mechanisms are exploration, intensification, and diversification. The objective of exploration is to create some operators that will modify the solutions in order to generate other solutions in the solution space and visit this space. The concept that we will develop there is called a neighborhood. The second mechanism is called intensification. And the idea is to improve an existing solution as much as possible. And the concept that we will use in this context is called local search. The third mechanism is called diversification. And this objective is different. It's to explore other regions of the solution space that we may have missed. And the main concept that we will use there is called meta heuristics. So let's start with exploration and this concept of neighborhood. OK, so the, the feasible set is too large. And as we have seen, we are not able to perform a complete enumeration. So basically, the idea here is that at each iteration, we will restrict the optimization problem to a smaller feasible subset. And ideally, this subset should be small enough to be enumerated. Typically, it consists of solutions that are obtained from simple modifications of the current solution. And the small subset that we will generate at each iteration is called a neighborhood. Let's take an example in the context of integer optimization. So let's consider the current iterate x, which is a, a vector of uh, integers, um, positive or negative. And the idea is that for each index k, we can define two neighbors. How? By increasing and decreasing the value of x k by one unit. So the neighbors y k plus and y k one are obtained by keeping all the values the same for all indices different from i, then generating one neighbor based on increasing the value of x k and another neighbor, which should be actually x k minus, by decreasing x k by one unit. So let's take an example. So we have x, which is a vector of entries 3, 5, 2, 8. And let's generate the two neighbors for index 2. So the value of uh, x2 is 5. Therefore, we have one neighbor which is generated by replacing 5 by 6, and another neighbor which is generated by replacing 5 by 4. So this is as simple as that. Let's illustrate this now on an example with two variables, x1 and x2, so that we can draw it. So x as a value which is integer here. So we take the first coordinate and we generate two neighbors, one that is obtained by increasing the value by one and one which is obtained by decreasing the value by one. And then we do the same for the second coordinate to obtain this neighbor and this neighbor. And as you can see from the picture, you understand why they are called neighbors, right? Because we are just next to the current solution. So this is an example of a neighborhood that can be obtained for integer optimization. Of course, the concept of neighborhood is completely general. It must be defined based on the structure of the problem, and you need to use creativity here. This is really where you exploit the structure of the problem. This is an example of being creative. So here, I define the neighbors of x as all the points that can be reached by using the allowed movements of a knight in a chess game. Okay, so these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possibilities. The second concept is uh, intensification, and this is what we call local search. So let's consider the integer optimization problem that consists in minimizing f of x, so whatever it is, uh, constraining x to be 
uh, integer and subject to a feasible set f. Now we consider a neighborhood structure that we have defined before. So v of x is the set of neighbors of x for the problem that we have defined. Remember, the idea of a neighborhood is that we can enumerate it, right? So the idea here is that at each iteration k, we will enumerate these uh, neighbors that are in vxk, so xk being the current iterate, and so we consider them one at a time. And then for each of them, if it is better than the current iterate, so if f of y is strictly less than f of xk, because we are minimizing, and we define the new iterate to be y, because it's better than xk. And then we proceed to the next iteration, meaning that we consider the neighborhood of y, we enumerate it, and each time we find a better solution, we jump to it. Now, if we reach a point such that all the neighbors are worse, so it means that the value of the objective function is greater or equal to f of xk for all the neighbors, then it means that xk is a local minimum. And the local search finishes. We have found a local optimum, meaning that all its neighbors are less good as xk, and we stop. So let's take an example. So this is the integer linear optimization problem that we considered before. And here is the feasible set. So this is the intersection between the polyhedron and the lattice of integers. I have also represented in red the level line of the objective function. So let's consider the neighborhood structure that we have introduced before, where we take the, the coordinates of the x solution and change it by one item one at a time. So we start from the point x0, which is 6, 0, which is here. And then we enumerate the neighborhood starting from east, then going north, then west, then south. So here we go east to go to this point, and this point happens to be better than the previous one. So we define it as the new iteration. Now we do it again, we start now from 7, we go east, but if we go east, this becomes infeasible, so we, we cannot consider this as a, as a potential uh, candidate for the next iteration. So we reject the east neighbor, so now we consider the north neighbor, which is this one, and actually it happens to be better than the previous one, therefore we accept it. Then we start again the algorithm. We consider first the east neighbor, this one, and it happens again to be better. So it's the next iterate. We start again. We go east. This is infeasible. It does not work. So we go north, and this is again better. Excellent. So this is the next iterate. We start again. East, infeasible. North, infeasible. Then we go west. But this point is feasible, but it is not as good as the one that we are currently considering. And of course, if we consider the one in the south, well, this is the one where we are coming from, and we know that it is worse than the previous one. So we have found a local optimum. This point here is a local optimum. Now I would, I would like to show that the local search may converge to a different solution depending on the starting point. We apply the local search algorithm starting from the point x0 equals 0, 3, which is this point, and we apply exactly the same technique. So we first look east. Well, each time in this case, east is feasible and better. So we go down, we go down, we go down, we go down, we go down until here. So here now, we try to go east here, but this is infeasible, so we reject it. Then we go north. This one is infeasible, we reject it. We go west, well, we are coming from this point, and it's worse, it's up, we are going up. And the last one is south, we consider this one, it's also going up. So therefore, this point is a local optimum. 
and it's different from the one we have found before, as you can see. I would like to show you as well that the point that we obtain as a solution of the local search will be different depending on how you enumerate the neighborhood. So here I will take the exact same neighborhood as the first example and the exact same starting point, 6, 0. But now I will enumerate the neighborhood starting from north, then going west, then south, then east. So if I start from this point, I go north, I go down on a feasible point. From this I go north, I go down in, to a feasible point, and again here. And now I can check that if I go north, it's infeasible. If I go west, this is going up. If I go south, this is going up. And if I go east, this is infeasible. So I'm reaching, uh, again, a local optimum. But it's a different local optimum than the one that we had before. So let's go back to the slides where we started from 6.0 here. You see that the local optimum is different. Okay, so what are the comments that we can make based on what we have shown? The local search algorithm stops at a local minimum, so this is why it's called a local search. A local minimum is a solution which is better than all its neighbors. That's the definition. And we have shown on some examples that the outcome depends on the starting point and on the structure of the neighborhood. So the design of the neighborhood will, of course, influence a lot the local search algorithm. And this neighborhood must be designed in such a way that it is sufficiently large so that you increase the chances of improvement, but also sufficiently small to avoid a lengthy enumeration. The example of a neighborhood which, be, which is too small would be uh, just generating one neighbor at the west. This is really a bad neighborhood because it not only it's too small, but it allows you all to go only into one direction. And an example of a neighborhood which is too large is to define each feasible point as, as being in the neighborhood. But again, we know that this cannot be enumerated, so this is not feasible. The current practice now in recent heuristics is to use quite large neighborhood because of the computer power, we can enumerate larger uh, neighborhoods. So, by designing large neighborhoods, you actually increase the, the chances to, to improve the, the current solution. And also, in general, we use symmetric neighborhoods. What does it mean? It means that is if y is a neighbor of x, well, x is also a neighbor of y. It, it makes things more intuitive, and also it gives more flexibility to the algorithm. 